Welcome back to Dr. Bagpipe. This is the eighth video uh, of our inaugural launch here. Uh, and I thought that it would be nice to get off the practice janitor for a minute and actually just show you what I use uh, for my bagpipe setup. Um, starting with the box. So I'm about to practice today. Uh, yeah, I practice generally every day. Um, I try to, um, you know, not get everything done on those practice days, but try to have something focused. Um, but anyway, so I use the Pelican 1510 case, which has a pull-out handle, wheels on the bottom, very helpful in airports, generally fits in all airplane uh, overheads, except maybe like some small puddle jumpers. But um, anyway, in that case, since I do travel a lot, I got a bagpipe sticker on there to tell people what we got going on here. Um, it shows a recent travel, Martha's Vineyard. Uh, Burn, Switzerland, and some recent listening, Iron Maiden. Okay, check them out. But let's go check out the bagpipes inside. Okay, the Pelican 1510 keeps it pretty uh, airtight, you know, watertight. It'll float if you're uh, on the boat. So um, when you have a party accident, which um, I haven't encountered yet. But I um, uh, wanted to just say that yeah, in California I uh, and other parts of the world, you're going to encounter... Uh, moisture issues with the instrument. Either it's too wet or it's too dry. Uh, I like to kind of control that environment just a little bit. So I keep it all in here and um, the next step is to take a look at my chanters. Colin Keo B flat. This is in development. I'm working on this with the apps read. Of course brushes and the wet roller. A G1 uh, chanter for generally for uh, more contemporary pitch, um, but you know, if I'm in conditions in outdoors where the stability of a, of a plastic chanter um, versus the, you know, the nuance of a wind chanter is more desirable. Um, I, I like the G1 in that regard. It's very close to a solo chanter style. Uh, the predominant B-flat chanter that I use with this uh, tone protector here is the Shepherd Orchestral. Uh, I've been using it for 10 years with Blarbuster, played with orchestras, played with percussion ensembles. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm going to get another one, I think, and do a review on it. Um, generally, now that uh, Shepherd is making a B-flat appropriate read, I'm going to start using that. Um, much to my... Um, uh, guts pleasure because uh, generally I have to find a very hard read in California to get to B flat. But I'll talk more about B flat setup soon enough. Uh, my other primary chanter with a tone protector on it is a David Nail solo style. This is my third David Nail solo chanter. Um, you know, they, they just tend to um, go after about five or ten years, and um, especially uh, when someone breaks one of yours. But anyway, moving along, I like this one. It's very comfortable. Nice bright pitch, but uh, comfortable range of harmonics and uh, uh, nice round tone to it. Okay, reeds. Shepherd. Generally, I'm using Shepherd because I like uh, the old style reeds. Not ridge cut reeds, but you know, straight cut. Um, finding Shepherd, and I did, for ridge cut, I do like... Uh, a G1, and here's a Colin McClellan that I'm about to work on as well. I keep plenty of other hemp uh, dental uh, dental floss for the blowpipe because the hemp tends to go there. Um, extra corks, lots of tape, some good fortune. And I'm an easy drone guy. So here is my um, sort of contemporary pitch, 480 centered. Uh, with an inverted bass, and here is my low, long setup that is intended for B-flat. I sometimes mix and match the basses depending on the overall uh, tonal effect I'm looking for, or, you know, if the strike-in uh, is a crucial component, component of what the um, project I'm doing. Extra reeds, tons of extra reeds, earplugs. And now the pipes, David Nail 1996, badly in need of a polish, but uh, you know, uh, since it's been the pandemic, not too many people have been looking. Here are the drone tops, let's put them separately. And getting to the bottom of the mechanism, here is the DN, they're DN5s, David Nail, and they are circa 1996, uh, probably the best era for David Nails being sent to Simon Fraser University Pipe Band, and I played these in that band um, to some world champion wins. Uh, I love them, they're, they're very full. They work well with uh, contemporary pitch and low pitch, and um, they're just my baby. 
I use an adjustable blowpipe. And um, look at this, I even have my SFU bag cover from ages ago. Maybe it's time for a, a revamping video. But uh, I use the old sheepskin. Why? Because it just helps me get a robust tone. I don't use any trap. I just use the easy drones because I find them very moisture resilient. And I like to go with a robust wet sound for many, many of my projects. Um, I will be doing a video soon where I change out these products for a Ross canister system because I'm about to do some multi-tracking product pro projects. And in that type of environment, um, the more sort of uh, precise predictability of the moisture control, the Ross, and that type of uh, slightly cleaner sound uh, works well for multi-tracking and making uh, all of those multiple bagpipes blend. Um, and tune precisely together. I use one in the uh, Julia Wolf Lad piece. But for lately for solo stuff and for Blarbuster, I love doing the open sheep sound because it's just huge and just has so many harmonics. And um, uh, But anyway, to each their own, I'm gonna start practicing now that I have everything out and I uh, can't wait to dig in and get some tone and get some tunes going today. Happy piping, bye-bye now, happy holidays.